All right, time now for Game Changing Connection presented by AT&T. We're going to look at a couple of plays that sealed the deal for Washington and Michigan in their respective semifinals. And guys, let's start with the heart and soul of this run game. This Woo! time it's Blake Corum out of the backfield. Though. Blake Corum out of the backfield right here. Great design, man coverage, slipping him out right there. Linebackers having a trouble of communicating through all this traffic. Look at this play design. The Falcons, we ran this in the Super Bowl right here in the same stadium against the New England Patriots in 2017. <laughs> we don't want to talk about that game too much, but still, <laughs> great play design, getting your playmaker the football. This offense is designed around Blake Corum. How he eats is how the offense eats. This guy is a dynamic force. Yeah, and, and they do a great job of shifting and then motioning and then Blake Corum, that was just one of two catches that he had in the game. Yes, sir. This was a huge fourth and two for Michigan to win the game. Blake Corum, this is a 27 yard catch and run. The last time he had a catch of even 20 yards or less was week two. That was the most yards that he had as a pass catcher coming out of the backfield right. and that's credit to Sharon Moore understanding let me get the ball to my most clutch player in the most clutch situation and by the way you got whoa, Robert whoa, Wilson whoa, what is that? Hey, you're yeah, right yeah. you're right hey <laughs> Robert Wilson's better than that but still you know Sharon Moore he's thinking players not plays yes and he's trying to make sure that he designs his plays to make sure that Blake Corm is involved in that run game in that pass game yeah, as well speaking of clutch how about Wilson clutch Matt you check right. this play out by him Play action right here to Blake Corum. Low red zone. Stop the run if you're playing against Michigan. Not so fast, my friend. As one of our friends says here at ESPN. Roman Wilson out of the backfield on a Z sneak. Harry Douglas scored a lot of touchdowns in the NFL off of this exact play. How big is it going to be for Michigan for him specifically to show up tonight? Oh, man. I mean, he, he has to make impactful plays in this passing game. He had a lot of opportunities against this Alabama defense. And fortunately, Alabama was a, a created enough pressure on the quarterback to really take away some of those big plays. There were multiple plays in that game where Michigan's going to look back and say, we really should have been in Alabama by 21 points. Yeah, that's what they were saying after the game. They were really stronger and faster. And yes. they outcoached Alabama, which is why Michigan feels good coming into this game. That's right. right. So that's the offensive side for Michigan. It's been well documented by this point. Michigan's got the best defense, at least scoring-wise, in the entire country. Uh, and Jalen Milrow got a heaping spoonful of the blitz from Michigan out in Pasadena. <laughs> What impressed you most about their blitz for Michigan and how they were able to penetrate and get pressure? Well, we saw, we were on the field before the game, the size of this defensive line, the size of the linebacking core, their ability to collapse the pocket consistently around Jalen Milrow. There was no throwing lanes. It was very difficult for him to di dissect what was happening on the back end against that Michigan defense. I expect that again here tonight. Mason Graham, phenomenal football player. Chris Jenkins, his domination at the yep. line of scrimmage. You see Grant right there, 350-pound defensive Big tackle four. right there. There. A lot of big bodies there, difficult to move, especially in crucial run situations, and they can also get after the passer in one-on-one -on -one situations as well. You know, the thing that Michigan did was confuse Jalen Milrow a lot. So it, you need to understand, coming into this game, you probably won't conf confuse Michael Penix right. as much, but what I'm going to do if I'm Michigan, I'm going to try and uh, show him cover three, but we're really in cover two. Show him man, but yes. we're really in zone as much as possible and then bring those pressure from the interior because Washington has great tackles, but the interior is a spot where you want to attack them. However, the fact that they have so many skilled wide receivers allows them to be in max protection, have yeah. six, seven guys, which is why Dylan Johnson plays such a huge role in pass protection. Great pass protector, Matt. No we have talked about this plenty of times. And time. you're right. I mean, we're talking about the tackle here, but Derek Moore, yes. Brandon McGregor, that matchup on the outside, can't wait to see that one as well. All right, let's talk about who you have said is one of the best throwers that you have ever seen in the college Man. game, Michael Penix Jr. I mean, he carved up this Texas secondary. This is what I love about Michael Penix. His throwing is off the charts good, man. Woo. He is the best college football thrower in the history of the game. Oh, it's let him fact. know. And he's a lefty, my friend. <laughs> so shout out to my brother and all those other strange lefties out there <laughs> because he can sling it. The other thing, too, the belief that he has in his receiving core, mm -hmm. right? The ability to give him those one-on-one -on -one opportunities. His movement in the pocket, it's like Joe Burrow, but he can throw it like Marino. He can throw it like Elway. He's tough as hell, yeah. and he does a great job of creating when things aren't there. That's a big compliment uh, because I saw your, your father, Big Phil, say he's literally the best thrower that he's ever seen. And one of the critiques for Penix coming into this season is right. that he's not throwing his wide receivers open. Well, guess what, y'all? This season, he's throwing his wide receivers <laughs> wide open. And they can be covered. We saw that against Texas. And it doesn't matter if you have a Dunze covered. Penix has the ability to throw the ball 
ball in an area that his wide receiver can get it. And the thing about the Michigan DBs that I'll give them credit over Texas is they'll more, more than likely be able to play through the ball more than Texas did. It's going to be such a fun matchup to watch. It's it really gonna, is. It's going to be awesome. I mean, you got strength versus strength in the championship game. You can't really ask for much more than that. Yes. Michael Penix Jr. is certainly going to play a huge part of that. Those were some of the key connections to get both of these teams to the national championship game. It is going to be exciting, that's for sure.